How you doing guys? Today I am working on the 1956 RJ35. I was going to work on the engine a little bit, uh, like I said in the last video, but I think we're going to hold off on that just a little bit longer, and I'll show you why in just a second. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fix this speed selector arm, because like the steering shaft, it has uh, scoliosis. So we'll get to that. But why am I not working on the engine? In the last video, I had said that this was a 1200. It appeared to be the original engine. After really looking at the engine, this is not the original engine, and I'll show you why. Number one, this has a solid head tin uh, on it. Typically, RJ35s would have the Clinton head tin that has the punch outs for the head bolts and press in like uh, steel plugs in the, in the head tin itself. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll dig one out from the shed so you can see the difference, but this is solid. That would not be correct for an RJ35. Second, this is not wired for a kill switch. RJ35s would have had a kill switch to kill the motor. This has a kill tab. So that is not correct for an RJ35. Number three, the carburetor. The choke arm is on the wrong side of the carburetor. It actuates on the side that's not the recoil side. That would be incorrect for an RJ35. This arm should be on this side of the carburetor. So the head tin, the kill, the engine kill, and the choke arm are all incorrect for an RJ35. Then the next thing is the governor setup on this motor. The governor setup on this motor, as you can, if you can see here, there's just a solid arm. Now this is to fix as you can see, fix the, um, basically to fix this into full throttle. So this, this engine must have came off like a pump or can't be a generator because it doesn't have the correct crankshaft for a generator, but some sort of application where full throttle was needed all the time. Okay. Uh, on an RJ35, there's usually where this bolt is, there's a pivot. That pivot has like an arm, which is shaped like an L and the, th the throttle cable comes here and will actuate that arm in this direction which then stretches and or releases tension on the governor's spring and that's what this is so with this arm being fixed or semi-fixed it's loose that tells me that this was basically set it to a certain uh rpm and forget it so this is wrong with that when you add it up, this is not the original engine uh, for this tractor. So we need to get a couple parts. We got to get a pivot and we got to get an L arm or the governor arm that's shaped in an L. Now we'll go out to the shed and take a look at those in a second. Um, it doesn't matter about the head tin. We can still use this head tin, not, a, not an issue. Um, because the engine isn't technically running, we we're going to have to do some ignition work anyways. That means we gotta knock the uh, Shinaki flywheel bolt off and we gotta get the flywheel off because we gotta get to the points in the condenser. Number one, to make sure that they're good and two, to wire a kill wire. So, and then the carburetor, the carburetor is the carburetor. We just gotta take it apart, clean it, put it back together. And the choke arm is where the choke arm is gonna be. There's nothing I can do with that. So a bunch of, little, a bunch of work that's needed here, so let's go out and let's take a look at an RJ engine. You can see the differences. Now this Clinton motor is a B1290 um, and set up for an RJ35. So I'll, I can show you what the engine on that other machine should have looked like. Starting off, we'll look at the head tin. You can see that there's these plugs right here. Those go over the tops of the head bolts. Um, if you pop these out, there's holes in the head tin itself. So, and you can see there's like a teardrop so you can get to the head bolt here. That would be correct for an RJ35. Unlike the one that's on that RJ35, it's completely solid. There's none of these. Um, this is an incorrect carburetor. This is a Carter N carburetor off a Kohler engine. I prefer these carburetors over the LMG style carburetor that's on that RJ35 um, with the choke arm that's wrong. So this is incorrect, but it is 
the you know it's the equivalent Kohler carburetor on it. Uh, kill wire is right there because there's no kill tab, so that would be correct. And when we look at the governor, this is the little arm that I'm talking about that is like an L. See, the throttle bolts to this bolt here on the blower cover comes over and then gets attached to this. So when you open up the throttle, see how the spring creates tension? That's the governor spring. On the other engine, it has a fixed arm that automatically sets the governor spring tension and holds the throttle at wide open throttle all the time. So, you know, we need to get this pivot, whoops, sorry. We need to get this pivot bolt and we need to get one of these arms. Uh, and then we can hook up the throttle. Outside of that, that's really the differences through the uh, differences of the motors. Obviously, this one here has a Fairbanks recoil on it. The one we're working on, the 56, has a uh, Shinaki recoil for it. That's why there's that big nut sticking off the crank. Uh, let's see what else. I have a couple other Clinton engines. They're they're buried back there. You can see here's another one with the holes without the plugs in it right there. That's a B1290. That's another, that's an NOS B1290. Um, that's a vertical 1200. So we got, we got various junky uh, Clinton motors. I think there's one, even another one back there somewhere. Uh, and there's a, no, that's a transmission. But in general, there you go. That's, we need to find some of these. We need to find those governor parts for the, for the 56 RJ. But for right now, that's how that motor is supposed to be set up. So to fix the speed selector arm, I think the best course of action is just to take it off. It's really not a big deal. There's a bolt at the bottom right there, which has a tension spring on the inside. And that's what creates the, the snapback of the arm. And there's these holes and there's a piece of like a peg right there at the end and that peg locks into one of the holes like that and the spring creates the tension to, to keep it in place uh, there's a hitch pin it's supposed to be a cotter pin but there's a hitch pin on the actual selector arm so we're going to keep it pretty we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible we're going to undo the spring tension take the bolt out take off the hitch pin this whole arm will come off we'll break out the torch a straight edge and we'll get that thing straightened out. We'll go over all the little bits and pieces of this part on the on the RJ uh, when I go to put it back on or reinstall it. Um, I'll show you all the little tidbits uh, about this. Now, as you can see, this thing is bent in multiple, multiple directions. You know, I'm thinking that this thing fell off a trailer or it must have fallen off a trailer or a pick out of a pickup truck or out of a truck uh, the way that things are bent it's just telling me that there's something something happened all right number one you can see how this thing has all been bent up you know that or I showed you in the last video how the steering uh, you know shaft was bent and that's three quarter inch bar stock so that that had to take a heck of a hit right and then the other thing too, if you notice, or I noticed, is that the hood stand is bent back. You can actually kind of see it like right about there. Um, maybe the other side is more, yeah, let me just get this thing out of the way. But when you look at it, I know the frame is a little tipped back, but the hood stand looks like it's been, is bent too. I, I'll have to take a look at that, but maybe now that I'm looking at it through the camera, it's not. But in any event, this thing took a shot somehow because this three quarter inch piece of bar stock was bent considerably. Uh, and then this thing is just, this thing's just roached. So what, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, put it in the vise heat this up and just try to get the huge big bend out of it if that means it's still a little crooked or pointing off in a different direction that's fine i can go back and try to dial it in but for right now let's go ahead and get the big bend out of it
Okay, so um, after some torching and bending and then using the press, I think I got that thing about as close as you're going to get it. I mean, now I may have to tweak it a little bit this direction once we put the hood on because I noticed even with it bent, it was real close. The hood was real close to it, but it was all bent to poop. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. I am going to let this thing cool off and then we'll go ahead and we'll put it back together. So let's go over the bits and pieces. So obviously we have our arm. The lower portion of the arm is held in with a pivot bolt that goes right there. Uh, this hole is where the actual actuator arm uh, goes in. All the parts are original except for this hitch pin. This hitch pin is the whoever uh, used that right there. That's not right. It should be a cotter pin. So this is not right, but we're going to just reinstall it. Uh, the bolt is pretty cool. It's pretty cool, actually. It's a 3 8 bolt, 9 16s head. Um, it's drilled for the cotter pin. And what that does is as you actuate the arm and the spring is is causing tension, it the, the actual bolt, or the nut, I should say, sorry, uh, doesn't you know work its way off. The cotter pin actually holds it in place. Kind of a cool old school nut, 3 8 16 thread, but it's a, what is it? It's a 11... 11 16th yeah it's an 11 16th size so kind of neat um so you have a 9 16th normal 9 16th head on a 3 8 16 bolt but you have a 11 16th uh nut with the 3 8 16th thread pattern in it i'm going to go ahead and uh straighten out the original cotter pin clean this all up this is just coated in, in grease and crap um so i'm going to clean these up a little bit uh, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall Okay, so the first thing we want to do to reinstall the selector arm is we want to go ahead and get the actuator bar, if you want to call it, um, in the arm itself. The L portion of it has to go through this hole in this direction. So basically what we can do is we just go ahead and fictitiously hang the bar off the indicator. We're going to take this kind of line it up, kind of get it in there. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hitch pin. All right, we gotta get the hitch pin lined up to a point. Where is it? There we go. All right, the hitch pin is in place. I'm gonna go ahead and hang the bar back on. We're gonna take the bolt and we're gonna slide the bolt through. Might have to take it off to line it up, but we get the bolt semi lined up, we push it through, we put it back in the indicator hole just to keep it all in place. Next is the spring, we go ahead and put that on. Next is the bolt, I mean the nut, sorry. And we're just gonna get that started. Now to set the tension, it's, it's usually pretty easy. In other words, tighten up the bolt, excuse me, tighten up the nut on the spring enough so we can drop the cotter pin in and then back the nut off until it hits the cotter pin. And that's that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. So let me go ahead, grab this nut. Let me grab this. Oops. Let me see if I can see the hole. Look at there we go. It's, it's fully tightened up, but I need to find the hole for the cotta pin. There it is. Let's see if we can get that there. All right. Put that back in. There it is. We grab the oh, that's crap. I just want to line it up so I can open it up in a meaningful way. Come on. There we go. Pull up one of the legs. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to back this off and back the nut off the spring until it hits. And that should do it. Yep. And there it is. Okay, next up, the final piece. 
All right, and with that, we are done with the speed selector arm. That came out real nice, a lot better than I thought. Compared to what I started with, that's mint. I'm sure the owner should be real happy with it. All right, guys, that's this video. My back has just been starting to feel really good, so I don't want to push it anymore today. Next video, we will tear into that Clinton engine. We'll see what the ignition looks like. <laughs> Based on everything so far, I'm not holding out that that looks pretty underneath there, but we'll take a look at the ignition. We'll, if there's some parts that we need to get, we'll get those coming. We'll get a kill switch uh, or the kill switch wire put in place. We'll probably have to tear into that carburetor, clean it up, make sure it's okay. Check the oil. Put the shanaki on it and uh you know we'll see if we got fire in the hole all right guys thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe and if you enjoy these videos about little tractors rj35s you know rug carpet cuts for that matter uh please ring that bell so you know when the next video is coming up i am planning on returning back to friday nights very shortly it's just that I haven't had a whole heck of a lot of time to film and do projects, so I'm kind of like scrambling around for time to get, you know, get these projects finished. But I really do appreciate all your viewership. And until the next project, you have a nice day.